Hey guys, good morning. Let's see here. I'm hit all my buttons and I am, let's see here. It looks like I would be live. Yes, good morning on Facebook and YouTube. What's going on? I'm Bill DeWeese, voiceover talent, voiceover coach, and um, the guy who overlooks this, this YouTube channel and be speckled this morning. Time to give my eyes a rest from the contacts. So you see me doing this a lot. I'm just trying to focus in on what's going on in front of me. Um, so glad you're here. <clears throat> we get together every weekday morning, right around this time, between 8, 8 15 or so, uh, Eastern time to, I just like to share a thought or two regarding voiceover to help you on your voiceover journey. And ultimately with the goal of helping you to become profitable as a, uh, as a voiceover talent, our ranks are growing and, uh, I love it when you guys check in, let me know who you are in the live stream and where you're watching or listening from, um, this morning. And just a, just a quick plug, if I may, this channel has over 700 videos. Sorry, I'm starting to steam up my glasses. I guess I'm already, I'm already getting worked up and excited this early on in the live stream. It must, it's going to be a good one, apparently. Over 700 videos, most of which are voiceover tutorials. They're all free, so I would uh, invite you to, to come just kind of gorge yourself on the content, covering just about everything imaginable. And really, that's all just what I have here on the YouTube channel. It's just a taste, it's just a prelude um, to, my, to my voiceover trading services. And um, I fulfilled a dream a few years ago by creating what I call a voiceover university. It's officially titled The Voiceover Blueprint. And if you go into the description, you ha you'll have a chance to learn more and, and um, plug into my voiceover training if that's something that you're interested in. So I want to share with you a thought and a story. My thought is this. Your first voiceover impression is more important than you, than you can possibly imagine. Now, I know that you know that already. I mean, who doesn't know that a first impression is extremely important? But I want to illustrate that to you this morning by sharing something that happened to me. And it's just a reminder to me. And you might even other, pick up another one or two lessons along the way within the story. True story. Uh, it was, I would say, a week or two ago that I received an email from a large localization slash voiceover company, the kind of company that has like thousands of talent. On their on their roster and they do a wide variety of work on a global scale and uh, I received an email from them asking me to do an audition and I wasn't familiar with it with the company it didn't it didn't ring a bell but I was thrilled that I was on their radar and of course always excited to have an opportunity so so they gave me the audition it was an audition for McGraw Hill the publisher it was for an educational piece uh, a historical lesson on the Vikings not the Minnesota Vikings, I was like Nordsmen, I mean the actual Vikings from Scandinavia. And so I recorded the audition, sent it off, didn't give it another thought as I do with auditions, set it, forget it, you know, because you have no control over it at that point. But earlier this week, Tuesday, uh, no, I think it was Tuesday, that I heard back from the client a very nice email, which usually doesn't happen. This is such a transactional business. Most people never follow up to say, hey, you got, well, they'll, they'll, they'll let you know if you got the job, but if not, you'll never hear from them. That's typically the way it works, and that's okay. It's just the nature of, of the beast. And uh, But I get this nice email back saying, you weren't selected for the job, but we appreciate you auditioning. I thought that very nice. So I responded back in kind and thanked them for the opportunity. And, uh, and that was that, and didn't give it another thought. Well, next day, I receive uh, an email back from this client again saying, well, the person who was uh, selected for the job turns out that they cannot do the job for whatever reason. And you were, this, you were second choice. <laughs> Don't you love to hear that, hear that phrase? You're second choice. But, you know, in voiceover, it's not such a bad thing, uh, especially when the first choice is not available to do the job. And so they ask if I would be available to do it, to which I responded, absolutely, of course, I would, I would love to do the job. So the session was scheduled for yesterday morning. We did it over Source Connect. And the uh, session was uh, my client, which was this, uh, you know, this large international roster. That's my client, of course, their client was McGraw-Hill. So my client, we get on um, 
Source Connect, which is their audio, their studio engineer on their end, and then the or the, the the primary contact for that um, for the agency, and then they patched in their client, which was the representative from McGraw Hill, and so uh, we the session was. I don't know. It seems to me it was maybe a thousand words, maybe a little more. Um, and the the gentleman was, um, you know, very easy to work with. And his direction was he wanted me to read it more like, like it was a History Channel type of thing, where it was somewhat epic, not somewhat cinematic, but not movie trailer ish. And this I'm giving details because it's important. Because when it comes to making a first impression, um, following direction is so so important. Be easy to work with and follow direction. So uh, I gave him a test read and he said, that's it, do it. So we did the session. Um, we took care of it in quick order. We were done less than, than a half an hour. And uh, the client, uh, McGraw-Hill, they said, I crushed it. Their words crushed it. Uh, my client said to me, I was awesome. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to brag on myself. I'm trying to illustrate a point here. Point being, we ended the session with my client <clears throat> looking good to their client, my client looking good to McGraw Hill, McGraw Hill being thrilled with the work that I was doing. The, the entire experience left a good taste in everybody's mouth. So, your job as a voiceover talent is think of it this way you want to make your client a superhero to their client. And anything that you can do by following direction, being easy to, to, to work with, by being efficient, be prepared for your, you know, for your, for your session. I had, I had gone through the script a couple of times, so I was very familiar with the script. So I did maybe two pickups for the entire script. Um, again, it's not about being mistake-free. Everybody makes mistakes, and that's not the point. But the point was we weren't fumbling and stumbling around. We made short work of it, but it was exactly what they wanted, and they were, you know, and, and they were thrilled. The importance of that story is not that it makes my ego feel good. And it does. It makes me feel I love to, when I do a good job for a client and they give me great feedback, it makes me feel incredible. Here's the important thing that here's the big takeaway, the importance of that 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 voiceover. There's two two things to take away. Number one is that sometimes it takes a while for things to happen. And part of the story that I didn't tell you was that after the session was over and McGraw Hill was off the off the line, I asked my client client, I said, by the way, I said, how did you find me? Because I didn't recognize their name at all. And she said, you, um, you reached out to us a while back, I guess it was years ago, uh, to be considered to be put on their roster. Apparently, I was put on their roster, but nothing happen happened for several years. I had totally forgotten about it, which is not, which is not unusual. So it took, it took several years for my opportunity to come up. Keep that in mind. It can, some things happen quickly. Sometimes, sometimes things have to percolate. And by the way, if you're too young to know, percolating is the way you used to, to make coffee. You'd have to wait for it to percolate, percolate where the water would um, like boil and I don't know, actually boil, but it would begin the water. Uh, it's a long story. It doesn't matter. But the point is it takes a while. It takes a while to get the water to percolate and to create a pot of coffee. Sometimes you have to let these things percolate, kind of simmer, sit and stew and cook for a while. And you can't, you can't obsess about it. You can't look back over your shoulder. There's not, you know, you do what you can do and then, and then you wait. But when the opportunity happens, that's, there's, this is your first impression where you listen carefully, you follow direction, you prepare yourself, and you do the best you can. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means you do, be prepared to do the best you can and be easy to work with and focus on making your client the hero to their client. Because when I went into that session, I wasn't thinking about just that job. I mean, I, I don't care about getting a one-off job. That, that's not my, I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is creating long-term relationships with clients that are far more valuable than just one job. I want that to become 10 jobs, 100 jobs, 1,000 jobs over the course of my career. And so the thing that thrilled me most of everything is that after the session was over, I received a follow-up email from my client saying that we for sure would be doing more work together. Took a, it took a while. It took a few years for that to happen. But um, when it happened, I took advantage of the opportunity. And now 
I'm going to have a client that I can have a relationship and do work with. How regular that work will be, I don't know. Um, stay tuned. We'll find out. But that first impression cannot be, the importance of it cannot be overemphasized, being ready for it and doing the work. And when you do that enough times over a period of time, good things happen. They just do. So that's the importance of a first impression. Now let's take a look and see who is on the live stream this morning. Okay. Danny, San Diego, what's up? Hey, good morning, New York City. Bruce in Louisville, what's going on? Janet in Florida, good morning. Hey, Mike, good morning to you. Dory in Maryland, always good to see you on the live stream. Jeremy, what's up in Austin? Hey, Steve, you have a terrific Thursday as well. Um, John in Terre Haute, Indiana, good morning. Good morning to Guy in St. Louis. Uh, let's see here. By the way, Mike is in North Carolina, one of my favorite states. We've got Fred in Cameroon. Fred, good morning. Love it. Kansas City in the house this morning. Um, Apple Valley, California. Bruce, yeah, these are prescription glasses. Um, they're not readers. These uh when I'm not wearing my contacts, I have to wear these. They're the prog they're progressive lenses, um, so they're not bifocals or trifocals, but they just kind of gradually, you know, fade into the reader version. So when I want to read, if I want to, I have to kind of look down my nose at the through the bottom part of the glasses. So that's why. See me doing this. I'm not trying to look like an old man. I just am, and that's how I have to uh, how I have to read. Uh, Russ on North Shore, Cleveland, Ohio, the land, as I see they're calling it these days. All right. Hey, Rob, what's going on? Good morning from Loveland, and he'll be flying out to Olathe, Kansas today. And I just I just finished recording a commercial for Olathe Healthcare System what, yesterday or day before. Um, Fred. Let's see here. Sandra, <laughs> a.k.a. Clark Kent, our Superman. Oh, that's funny, Sandra. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, here we go. Lou Gehrig was a second choice, and he became the Yankee Iron Man. You know, always be ready for your opportunity. That's right. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Rob wants me to do a special video percolating. <laughs> YouTube that one, you know, uh, percolating coffee. You, you might get a big kick out of it, the way we used to do things back in the day. Okay, we got Ryan in New York. Um, San Francisco, good morning. <clears throat> Jessica in Columbus, Ohio. Mike, Ontario. Good morning, Wendy. Hey, Alex, 5 a.m. in Orange County. God bless you for being up this morning. Um, Palm Springs, California, good morning. Uncle Don in Chesapeake, Virginia. Beautiful country out that way. Guy says seeds are sown and must germinate in the dark until they break out to the light and bear fruit. Uh, and a hearty amen to that. That is the truth. Hey, Keith, good morning to you. Wendy and the Catskills. It's cold here. Winter's coming, she says. It is. Oh, and I, I hate to be reminded of it. And then Glenn in Ottawa. Ontario. All right. Hey, guys, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. It's always fun to get together and talk voiceover. I hope you find these uh, these chats helpful. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That way you'll get notifications when I go live. And, um, you know, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. That kind of uh, juices the algorithm and YouTube to, to share the video. And then, of course, share with as many friends as you possibly can. Spread the word far and wide. And apparently that's happening because we continually bring in uh, new viewers from far and wide. Well, I hope you have a great day. Uh, I'm going to try to make something good happen today, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow, which will be, by the